Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. It's another paid request. This time for Josh. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos or topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re reviews, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the film 100 Girls. Which I thought this sounded familiar, and it's because it's for the same director who did Shoot 'em Up. This is one of the early films he did. Just then after this, he did Monster Man. He did kind of a. I, did he? I can't remember if he or someone else did kind of a follow up called One Hundred Women, but does it have the same actors in there? And then his last film was Shoot 'Em Up, which is an incredibly underrated Clive Owen action film from two thousand seven. Love Shoot 'Em Up. To me, one of the more underrated action films in the past twenty years. I really do feel that way. But this one stars Jonathan Tucker, who I remember from the 2003 Tessie Chainsaw Master film. He was a guy with almost like perm hair, a bit more of a mustache and glasses. He plays a guy that one night in the elevator, the power goes out, he was a bit drunk. There's a lady there. They have sex. He loved it, of course. But all that was left was a pair of panties. So he's got to go find out who this girl is. So he goes to this female dorm and pretends to be the maintenance guy, the janitor, what have you, in order to find the matching bra and almost this weird take on Cinderella to find out who this mysterious lady was. And throughout it, it tries to be sort of like a pseudo-intellectual version of American Pie. Well, I have some really goofy humor. For example, what he's talking about his experience in the elevator. And it's all done in silhouettes. And he's talking about how his manhood rolls up like Jiffy Pop. And we see in silhouette that his crotch is bubbling up just jiffy popcorns coming out of his crotch. Or he'll say a line like, My dick is like a dog without a leash. And then you see it in this crotch moving, woof, 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 moving around like this. So it does like goofy stuff like that. Um, he has a buddy, James DeBello. You may remember, you remember Eli Roth's Cabin Fever, the guy who was the big douchebag, uh, who got bit by the pancake. I the pancakes. You know, the, he's the guy to get bit by the, the pancake kid. He's in this, playing pretty much, almost the same type of character. He was also in Detroit Rock City. He's a guy who, because he saw an ad, he puts these weights on his dick to supposedly supposed to make his dick bigger. And you find out later that he has an issue with women because of a physical problem on his crotch. Throughout the film, you see some recognizable people of some of the women. One of them's is Catherine Heidel. Uh, one of them is Jamie Presley. And it's one of those films I don't really know how to feel about because... The music is playing loudly like an American Pie movie with these various songs. It's trying to be rather goofy and silly with some of the scenes I mentioned. But at the same time, it seems like he's trying to have something to say about the sexes and... Him understanding women more. Understanding how, as he puts it, we all are afraid of women. You might speak for yourself, buddy. But at the same time, he goes to this seminar that's an obvious feminist leading the charge. And he stands up and goes, no, you know, each side thinks they're playing fair. And each side thinks they're both being cheated. And there's too many ifs in the world. The only is there should be is humanist. Humanist or humanistic. But there's too many other ifs in the world. 
so he's trying to play both sides. He's trying to be, yeah, guys are full of shit, but women are full of shit too. So I can kind of appreciate what he's trying to do. Whether that's entirely successful, i still not sure about it because there are moments I thought Jonathan Tucker's character just seemed like a dick. Like he's trying to search all these women. So for example, Catherine Heigl, he gets her, she gets him into a game of strip foosball and he keeps losing, he's got to take his clothes off. There's another lady, Jamie Presley, that anytime he talks, it's like he's speaking a different language. But then it gets to a point where he dresses up like a girl to handle with women. And when he dresses like a girl, he's talking to David Presley. He's able to talk with function. And a lot of times that could be a really tired dad when someone has to dress like a girl. But nobody else notices that he's dressed like a girl. Like, Mrs. Doubtfire, Robert Williams' enthusiasm worked in that movie, but very rarely does that kind of stuff work. I mean, is that as bad as Medea movie? No. And I'll probably put this above Big Mama's house. And thankfully, it's not the whole film of him doing it, just a little bit. But it's just like, it gets a bit... There are exceptions to rule, of course, but I'm just saying that could be a tired dad. But at the same time, there are some bits of that made me chuckle. There's a bit where he is not too much of a dick, and he saves his girl from her asshole boyfriend. And the way he makes fun of the guy about, you're a guy that used to have a Letterman jacket, but now you have a fake Euro trash ponytail, and uh, you're wearing makeup, and... Then we hear his monologue that he's making fun of this guy, his incessant chomping of this gum and slow mo he, his hands rise up and gets the bully's nipples in a titty twister and the guy's like oh. and then the guy retaliates so they're both in a titty twister war but it's done in slow motion and choir it's not like a big event action movie where the but it's all it's a titty twister war and the guy is in slow-mo roaring, but the war almost sounds like a demon. <sighs> like that, I will say, as silly and goofy as it is, that did make me laugh. That did make me chuckle. Some of the dialogue seems like Michael Davis, the director, was trying to be a bit witty. Like talking about how, how the hell did they describe it? Like the penis is a chicken shit because it shrinks back in fear, and how you know women's breasts are so beautiful but guys' dicks are so ugly because again the cowers they shrink back in fear or they shrink when it's cold, and how the hell did he put it? Like the. It's the cowardly flap of the elbow flesh. Which I... I don't have any flesh on my damn elbow. So that's why I can't even... Understand what the fuck he thought. Like, I don't have any f additional flesh on my elbow. Like, it's pretty much all there, man. Like, you know, right there. I don't have any additional flesh on the elbow. So I don't know what the fuck he was talking about. Maybe he has some funky elbows that you need to get checked, buddy. I don't know. So... That's why it's like it seems again the pseudo intellectual type of dialogue. Sometimes it felt a bit pretentious. Sometimes it felt like being up your own ass in terms of writing. I do think the director did a much better job in terms of in the action genre and shoot 'em up. Even that, you know, some of the comedy I didn't mind because of Paul Giamatti's. Because Paul Giamatti's reaction and his. The way he just attacked that performance and was just a lot of fun as the bad guy. And not every bit of humor in that film even worked either. But the acting scenes more than made up for it. 
I did appreciate what he was trying to do with this. And I don't think it was got off or anything. But I just see some people watching and going, I don't, know, I don't know if it just feels a bit up his own ass or it's almost sometimes gives guys a bad name with this movie. Like there's a bit where there's this girl who's kind of pushed aside. And he's going on this dialogue about Oh, ugly people, when you're not good looking, people treat you like, like the Ebola virus. And then you see, again, this goofy bit where he enters in a hazmat suit, is right near her. And I'm like, he's being a dick. And she's not even ugly. That's the thing, she's not even ugly. Not that that should matter anyway, but even then, I'm like, what elbow flesh? What ugly? She's not ugly. So it's just, sometimes I... It's not the most likable guy for me. I think that's the thing. Like, Jonathan Tucker's character, I really didn't have to give a rat's ass about his predicament because I didn't think he was that likable of a fucking character. So I didn't give a shit if he won, lose, or drew. You draw the sweat off my balls and put it in your mouth for all I care to the character. I'm like, you could draw a finger up my ass track and pop a finger like you pop fingers on people's assholes for I give a shit. Fuck that. See, that's what I did sometimes with the character. Like, fuck this character. So I just... Like, James DeBello, he could be a bit obnoxious. I say, if you did not like him in Cabin Fever, I doubt you'll like him in this. And he pretty much plays the same guy over and over again. Pretty much by the end of it, he starts to understand women more. So you say maybe that's the arc is him understanding more and that's why you don't like him the best at first. But I don't know, just I don't think he was I don't think Jonathan Tucker gave a bad acting performance. It's just can't say I was a big fan of the character. I will say it does something where it does play against the grain in terms of cliches. Spoiler alert. Just kinda in the middle he does catch up with a lady who is a former friend from school and you think okay well he's gonna try to search for this dream girl but he's gonna realize she's not the one for him it's actually this girl who he was roommates not room but he was friends with in school and she's helping him out find the girl but then you're the girl for me all along is right from my face they didn't go on that I kind of appreciate that because it made it less cliche on that front. No, the dream girl is the dro girl for him. So I, I, yeah, I appreciate they didn't go with the whole cliche thing of that nature. To spoil alert, you find out by the end as he's searching for the stuff that the, the girl who was in elevator was the girl he helped against the bully. Which, in the middle of the film, they have sex. But I guess she's looked at as a slut, and... Kind of made me go, well... You didn't think of her earlier? See, so that would have been the first to, to look into. Uh, James DeBello, you find out that he is seeming misogynistic because... He had a bad experience where I guess there's like a some hole under his dick, something like that. I guess he meets up with the ugly girl who's not ugly at all, and they get together. Uh, Jamie Presley, she gets in the tip boxing. Catherine Heigl, she gets with the Jonathan Tucker's lady friend who is a old schoolmate. He declares his love, goes to see her, she says it won't work out. He tries again after get the the bully out of there. Because at one point he was in women's clothes. The guy tried to kiss him. He bit the guy's tongue out. Has the evidence 
other people rise up hey this guy's a creep and so he gets carted off he gets with the girl the movie's over there you go like I said just I can appreciate what Michael Davis was doing with the the dialogue and the way people speak it's just it's kind of this weird just a position of trying to have this witty dialogue, trying to be trying to be smarter than above, but then having silly shit like jiffy popcorn coming out of your crotch, or your dick moving like a dog, or a titty twister fight. It just felt like two things kind of fighting with each other, where this stuff will work like a lower, lesser American Pie film. But then you have this other stuff that's trying to be a bit like clerks in terms of, in terms of dialogue. And it's not that I hated the film. It's just I don't think it was as perfect of a blend as maybe the director thought it was. That's just me, though. And like I said, the lead guy, I just found him... The actor was fine. The character, I just didn't really care about. His, but yeah, I didn't care if he succeeded. So, I wasn't a huge fan of the film. I'll say that. But that's just me. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.